Okay, happy Thursday. Meteorologist Erica Lopez here in the Cape Tree U Weather Center here for another exciting day of weather school because we have some weather to talk about that's going to begin to change across the Houston area. So I thought it'd be the perfect day to put together. If you've been tuning in every single day so far this week, I have talked about pressures and also how that influences our winds. I've also talked about um, humidity. So the difference of relative humidity and dew points. So we're going to talk more about that. Yesterday, meteorologist Addison Green talked about fronts and the different types of fronts uh, that happen across the country and across the globe. Today, I thought it'd be the perfect day to put all of those together because we're going to start to prepare for two different types of fronts moving through the area, a couple of cold fronts and a warm front. We're also going to uh, begin to experience a change of our humidity so we can recap on relative humidity and dew points and also uh, talk about some storm chances that are possible for this weekend. So wanted to just kind of put all of our tools together in the toolbox and hopefully motivate you guys to step outside when you go outside to get some fresh air to um, be, become your own meteorologist and also feel the changes in the atmosphere. Look out in the sky, see what's moving in. And that will be, you know, um, your homework lesson, let's say, for the weekend as we get closer to the weekend. Okay, we're taking a look at Galveston, and the reason for that is because we have a strong onshore flow that is back. So whenever we mention an onshore flow, that means winds are coming in from the shore. They're moving in from the Gulf of Mexico and uh, they're pretty strong out there today. And I wanted to show you the reason why. So let's move to our satellite radar. So this is kind of a recap from Monday's lesson. Remember what causes strong winds? I talked about low pressure and I talked about high pressure. And then I mentioned a word, uh, kind of a big meteorological term. It's called pressure gradient. All right. So the closer we have an area of high pressure and low pressure, the closer those pressures are to each other and the quicker it changes from an area of high pressure to an area uh, low pressure to high pressure or high to low air flows from high to low, then that indicates we have a tighter pressure gradient and that's going to give us stronger winds because those pressures are changing. So notice air flows from high to low but air around an area of high pressure is rotating clockwise. It's still going into the air area of low pressure, just has to go into that clockwise rotation. So here's the setup for Texas. Whenever we have an area of high pressure, at least the setup for Houston, whenever that high pressure, which gave us beautiful weather this week, it starts to move east because these systems are zonal flow is from west to east. As these systems move east, high pressures moving east, that is going to give us an onshore flow all the time. All right, so high pressure moves east, southeast winds, onshore flow, very strong onshore flow because we have an area of low pressure moving in, so the pressure uh, gradient is tight. But what else does that onshore flow do? So an onshore flow for us, after we had low humidity, below average temperatures, that's going to increase our warmer temperatures. So we have warmer moisture coming in from the Gulf, warmer temperatures coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, which explains why temperatures are on average about 10 degrees warmer than what we had yesterday. So that, that explains that temperature warm up. I also want to talk about our dew points. So we talked about dew points, I believe it was on Tuesday. That's how much moisture contents in the atmosphere. And on Tuesday, if you want to go back and look, we do have these videos on YouTube, just to recap. Um, the dew point is how much moisture is in the atmosphere. And I explained the reason why we like to look at dew points versus relative humidity because relative humidity is a percentage that's deceiving and it's based off of the dew point and also the actual temperature. So it fluctuates, it varies, and it doesn't necessarily tell the full story. So remember, we will always look at dew points. We love dew points. It's our best friend. We kind of hate relative humidity because it gets complicated and it doesn't tell the full story. So right now, notice dew points in the 50s. Why are they higher? Why is it muggier at the coast for our coastal counties than further inland? And that's another thing that an onshore flow does. That onshore flow brings in a southeast wind. It's pumping in Gulf moisture. 
Since that southeast wind just kind of started earlier today, our winds have been shifting throughout the day. And that is why our coastal counties are muggier. It's still comfortable. Whenever we have dew points in the 50s, that's still considered comfortable. But these dew points are higher than the low 40s, which is still considered very dry for our northern counties. So we're going to be watching this graphic. Uh, if you want to track it with us throughout the next couple of days and track the dew point and notice how it starts to increase. And then also uh, another little homework assignment. Whenever we have dew points in the 60s, I want you guys to step outside after this Facebook Live, um, after this weather school lesson. Step outside right now and notice how comfortable it is. That's going to let you know that humidity levels are comfortable. So remember, dew points are in the 40s and 50s. Then I want you to step outside tomorrow. Let's say around the same time, dew points are going to be in the 60s. So you can feel the difference. And then I want you to step outside same time on Saturday and dew points are going to be in the upper 60s. And then you can start to feel the difference also of what that means. Believe it or not, uh, once you kind of get used to it, you can possibly step outside at any time of the day or any part of the country and have a good feel uh, and a good educated guess as to what the dew point is if you're you know, outside and not necessarily looking at any weather graphics. Okay, so right now, temperature's at 74 degrees. So again, 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. That's because of this onshore flow. I've been tracking this wind also throughout today. Yesterday, winds were coming in from the north. Today, they've been shifting. So our north wind, I'm gonna go back to this graphic here. Our north wind, whenever high pressure is on top of us, let me see if I can color this in for it. So let's pretend this area of high pressure when it was here, which was yesterday, that was giving us more of a northerly wind, right? Winds are still rotating around clockwise, but by the time it got to Houston, that was still a north wind. So as this area of high pressure shifts east, if you're directly under it, guess who's getting a north wind still? Georgia, Atlanta is getting a dry north wind. But since the flow goes around clockwise, that's giving us an east-southeast wind, which again explains our whole weather story for the warmer temperatures and the muggier conditions outside. So let's see what other graphics I have here. All right, let's talk future track, all right? Because I already talked about the change of winds and the pressures which are influencing our change in our forecast. And yesterday, meteorologist Addison Green talked about fronts. We have several fronts that we're tracking for the next couple of days. So something else that happens with that onshore flow is that clouds. Clouds are going to increase. We have higher moisture content. Well, if cloud coverage increase, it's going to be muggier. When it's muggier, it's not going to be able to get as cold at night. Um, and also, We'll be tracking the next front that we'll be moving through. So here's front number one. Moving in on late Friday for our northern counties. So let's talk about storm chances along frontal boundaries, which Addison Green talked about a little bit yesterday. And I like to look at what we call the convergence zone. This is where we have a north wind clashing with our south wind. All right, this is what we call our convergence zone, and that's typically where we draw the frontal boundary and we have lift in the atmosphere around that convergence zone. So what does that mean? That means our warm air clashing with the cold air, that warm air is able to rise. It's rising and rising at a quicker rate than if we were not in a convergence zone. And that lifting mechanism allows for our showers and thunderstorms to um, be able to produce at a higher rate versus if we were not dealing with a convergence though. So it gives us the lift in the atmosphere that we need for those showers to push through. Okay, now I'm gonna fast forward to Saturday because that front is going to move into the Gulf of Mexico, which this is actually a, a late season front. Uh, fronts start tend to not be able to push through the Houston area as we progress through the summer. And then we're just, in the dog days of summer, right? But this front is going to stall out in the Gulf of Mexico. Then it's moving back in as a warm front. So we did talk about warm fronts yesterday and I specifically remember a question um, why um, warm fronts typically bring showers, 
not as many thunderstorm chances as a cold front. This is going to be one of those scenarios that you guys can step outside and kind of visualize. OK, I'm looking at radar. I'm looking outside. We have storm chances with the cold front moving in. So again, cold front bringing in our best storm chance and then a warm front bringing in some wet weather. But then we have a, the possibility of some severe weather. So with this warm front, it's dragging in a lot more moisture. It's bringing in warmer temperatures. That's going to give us plenty of fuel for the second cold front to clash with. And that's going to possibly give us some severe storms. Best chance for severe storms will be on Sunday. So just kind of visualize um, oh. Your homework assignment, I guess, would be to look at the radar, visualize what's going to happen with these types of fronts, and then go outside and verify because that completes the whole process of what it's like becoming a meteorologist or a meteorologist who for puts together the forecast. The last part of putting together your forecast is seeing if the forecast actually materializes. So this is what our best educated guesses based off of what computer models and I have looked at several different computer models this computer or this future track I did incorporate two different computer models to tell the best story that I could for you guys so I did I did um, this is computer data coming in from our RPM computer model and then I introduce our GFS computer model. So I kind of mix two different com computer models because again, they all tell a different story. But this is our best estimated guess. And now the question is, is this forecast going to materialize? It could change here and there uh, from here through the weekend. And so it's also your guys' job to stay up to date with the forecast and see what actually goes on. But here's a look at our severe threat for Sun. wait, Thursday, Friday, Today's Thursday, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is for Saturday. Notice the severe threat is not that high. This comes out from the Storm Prediction Center and they have um, a severe storm threat for three days out. So they have day one, which is on Thursday, today, day two, and day three. Day four, they don't have a day four that's issued specifically. So by tomorrow, we'll be able to have a day four and see what the severe threat on Sunday is. But Chances are, and you can tune in tomorrow, uh, we'll be talking about that. I do think we'll have a good chance for tomorrow, which will indicate sat Sunday, day three from tomorrow, to have a slight risk for the Houston area. And I think we'll have a greater severe weather risk in that area. So it's going to be another busy weekend out there. Okay, so hopefully I just thought it'd be fun to kind of put all of our tools again. If you're tuning in late from what we have learned so far this week, we went over pressures, we went over winds, we went over humidity and fronts. All of those things are about to influence our weather. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this weather school. And I'm going to um, turn things back to our digital director, Randy, and see Randy, are you still on the phone? Oh, there he is. Yeah, see if there's any questions out there. Yeah, we've got one. Um, just some uh, general questions. Uh, okay. Misha wants to know what the difference between a cold front and a warm front are. Oh, good question. Okay, uh, Misha asked that? Misha, yeah. Okay, and Misha, um, so you can actually go back to yesterday's weather school. Meteorologist Addison Green had his whole weather school lesson on that but I can give you a little bit of a short rundown. So a cold front, what it's doing is separating cold air behind it. It's dragging in the cold air. You can indicate where the arrows are going. That's where that cold front is heading. Oops, ignore that right there. Um, that's where that cold front is going. And behind it is the cold air. Notice whenever we have snow, you know, behind that system that's indicating temperatures are significantly colder, able to produce some snow. And then ahead of this front, it's pretty warm. So it's separating a cold air that's going to continue to clash with um, warmer air ahead of it. And depending on how much moisture we have and instability in the atmosphere, that can produce some strong to severe storms. Now, a warm front, I'm going to go to our graphic here because we will have a warm front move in this weekend, that cold front is going to convert to a warm front when it stalls out in the Gulf of Mexico. What this warm front is going to do, it moves the opposite direction and it's dragging in warmer air 
from areas south of that frontal boundary. So that's dragging in warm air. And also, since we're so close to the Gulf of Mexico, it's bringing in a lot of Gulf moisture. So the type of storms that we have are typically different with this warm front because we get a lot more lift in the atmosphere when we're talking about um, cold fronts. All right, that's given us a lot more instability because we have cold air clashing with warmer. It allows that warm air to rise and produce stronger to severe storms. Now, warm fronts are typically associated with um, stratonimbus type of clouds. So you'll likely have a blanket of moisture, high moisture content, but a lot of those storms, we don't have as much instability with it because we don't have the clash of the cold air. So those storms aren't able to tower and tower into severe storms. Now there are times where we could have decent, strong, heavy rains with this, but that's more so associated with blankets of, um, I would say lighter to moderate types of, whenever you have that very gloomy day outside, uh, that's just a constant kind of rain, a constant wet drizzle, or possibly pockets of light to moderate rain, that's more so associated with a warm front than a cold front. So hopefully that answers your question. But again, if you're even more interested in that, Addison Green also goes into depth about stationary fronts, occluded fronts, and our weather school we had yesterday. Um, and that really looks like all the questions. Everyone is cool. just commenting about what a beautiful day it is today. I know, and that's why I really wanted to talk about the changes we're going to have ahead, because this is something that, um, that you know, helps you become a better meteorologist with the changing weather patterns and kind of really understanding, okay, what do I see on the computer models? What's happening right now? How is that going to change? Did the computer models do a good job? at forecasting what was happening, which computer models, if you look at several different computer models, which computer models did better at this scenario than others. And that's how you just learn with experience. Part of um, whatever you're going to do in life, whether it's a meteorologist, whether it's another type of science, whether it's becoming an anchor or reporter, you get better with experience. So, you know, we are constantly learning. I'm constantly learning also. That's why I love being a meteorologist and being able to work in different parts of the country because you just learn everywhere you go and kind of soak in all the knowledge with time and experience. So I'll let you guys go. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Go out and enjoy the low humidity. Dew points are back in the 60s tomorrow, upper 60s uh, for the weekend. So again, embrace the sunshine, embrace the low humidity. We'll talk to you guys soon. Like you're out. Cool. Oh, oh that was not stopping. One second.